everyone. I'm Delphine Dallison and I am the Plastic Workshop Facilitator at the Govan Hill Bass Trust. Uh, I'm working as part of the new and exciting uh, community recycling project, the Up Hub. The Up Hub was set up thanks to funding from the Climate Challenge Fund. Um, and we're basically looking at how we can tackle issues around recycling plastic, recycling textiles and recycling wood. My main focus is going to be around everything to do with plastic. Um, this workshop is funded as part of um, Awards for All and that is thanks to them that we're able to um, provide you with the tools and uh, the materials and the teaching materials in your um, in your workshop pack. Uh, so we're very grateful to them for that. And um, yeah, hopefully out of uh, this, you'll come away with uh, a few new skills and uh, maybe some enthusiasm for doing more uh, with recycled plastic. And maybe I'll see you again uh, in future. So as part of your pack, uh, you, should, you should have received uh, a number of different tools and um, so we'll just go through them just now to make sure that you've got everything that you need uh, so you should have um, a, a sturdy pair of scissors uh, that should be provided as part of your pack you should have a couple of pairs of pliers one which is uh, a round nose uh, set of pliers and uh, one which is uh, more of a grippy style uh, set of pliers, a flat nose uh, pair of pliers. Okay, so you should have those two. Um, you should have a bag in which you'll have uh, different kind of uh, uh, findings for making earrings and also uh, some jump rings. Uh, so um, have a look for that. Uh, you will have what we call an awl and um, it's basically a sharp um, pointy tool uh, which you'll be using for making holes in the plastic. Um, you've got a handy little cover here that it comes with so I definitely recommend keeping it um, covered with that little sheath there. Uh, whenever it's not in use um, and then uh, you should also have a sheet like this with various kind of um, organic style uh, uh, shapes that you might want to use for your uh, for, for making a jewelry and uh, finally you should have a sheet of uh, plastic so um, I'll tell you a little bit more about this sheet in a minute uh, and how it was made um, but uh, before we go into that just uh, to show we've got kind of a smoother surface on the, the inside here and then we've got a more um, slightly rougher kind of um, strandy bits at the ends uh, so it's going to be up to you how you decide to use uh, your plastic sheet. You're welcome to get as creative with it as you want. Um, you should have more than enough here to uh, make at least um, two pairs of earrings. Uh, so um, I, uh, I look forward to um, seeing what you make with that. Uh, what I'm going to say is if you decide to incorporate the kind of more um, jaggy erratic kind of bits which i think you know can um can make a really really interesting uh uh effect in in your jewelry um you might want to just kind of um as you're doing it kind of give a, a good wiggle and just remove any bits you know make sure that basically what you're using is strong enough and that you don't end up with half your jewelry kind of breaking off when you're actually using it okay so I give a good wiggle here, there's some bits that are going to come up and then there's the rest is kind of strong enough for me to use, okay? So there we go, those bits are fairly strong, so those I could actually use as part of my jewellery, the rest maybe not so much, okay? So, um, first of all, 
what uh, we're gonna do is um, we're gonna well any I want you to have a think about what you might be interested in making um, as part of your, your this jewelry um, you've got sets of earrings uh, and you've got these uh, lovely shapes so it's entirely up to you you can choose to use one of these shapes or you can choose to you know turn the sheet around and draw your own shape or um, if uh, if you find that one of the shapes is uh, too big uh, for you for example uh, what you can do is you could just follow the kind of outline like this and you can draw it kind of at, at a smaller scale uh, keeping that kind of general shape but uh, sizing it down or if on the other hand uh, you wanted a shape and you wanted it a little bit bigger again you can kind of use a pen and just kind of draw an outline on the outside and just kind of size it up so it's entirely up to you um, this is just a, a guideline something that you can work with um, take it or leave it feel free to just use the back and go total freehand um, or just pick up your pair of scissors and just start cutting into your plastic it's entirely up to you so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, choose one of the shapes that we have here um, and I'm going to go with this one. So I'm just going to take my pair of scissors, going to first kind of roughly cut out of the sheet. There we go. Put that sheet aside and then uh, I've now got my uh, shape and I can kind of uh, cut out a more precise outline around it. Um, here we go. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm not quite blue peter enough, you see. I should have had this all set up and then just produce the shape, ready to cut out. But here we go. Oh, okay. So we've now got our shape here, this is what I want to be working with. So I'm now going to um, place it on my plastic sheet and just using a standard kind of biro, um, I'm just going to draw draw my shape out around it where, where I actually want it to be. Okay, so it should take the biro uh, fairly well um, then as you cut it out you'll be getting rid of most of the biro and if you have any left it should wash off fairly easily um, afterwards so don't have to worry too much about that okay so just draw around your shape any biro should do Okay, so there you go. I've kind of hit an area of my sheet um, where I quite like the pattern of the plastic, and I'm quite looking forward to seeing how it's going to come out. Just going over it, making sure that I've got a nice strong shape. <coughs> so I think you can see here the kind of outline that my biro has has drawn so you know any biro that you have in the house should be more than enough um i've used red just because that's the one that i had at hand um and it kind of stands out but black will be fine blue will be fine um and um yeah now that i have my shape so also thinking about this this is this is a pair of earrings uh so it's entirely up to you whether you want uh, to use, um, you know, you can get creative and have two different shapes or maybe you want to use the same shape both, both times and make it nice and matching. Um, that's again kind of up to you to have your creative kind of decision about that. But again, you know, if I wanted to do two matching ones, what I would do is I would just draw it out 
again i would pick out another area that i like on my sheet and draw it out again and then i'll be able to cut out two sheets that are nice and matching um i'm not going to bore you with uh, doing it twice i think curve uh, once will be more than enough and you kind of understand how it how it works um so then uh basically We've, uh, we've made the plastic sheet uh, so that it's nice and thin um, and uh, totally uh, cuttable with a pair of scissors. So uh, no fancy tools kind of needed here. Um, so I'm just going to start cutting through my sheet with my scissors. And depending, there'll be some areas that might be a little bit thicker than... But... Um, it should cut reasonably well so what you might want to do because here you're dealing with quite a large sheet of plastic is again just kind of cut out a larger area than what you need okay And then you can cut it down to the actual size that you need. So here I am. It gets a lot easier as well once it's, you're dealing with a smaller size. So again, just kind of Cutting off pieces at a time. Here we go. And that way you can kind of refine your shape as you go along. Might take, you know, not a huge amount of strength, but you know, it'll take a little bit of uh, kind of um, a little bit of strength in your hands to do this. Okay, if you're finding that you have an area that is particularly thick and that you're struggling with, it might be a case of just kind of um, drawing your shape again somewhere else uh, where it looks a little bit thinner and doing it there instead. Okay, so here we go. nice kind of simple shape i can then go in with the scissors and just kind of recut bits to round them off if i want to smooth it out etc okay so now i've got a shape that i'm fairly happy with and again just by simply kind of um, using my fingers here i can just uh, wipe off any leftover biro that I might have and here's my lovely little plastic shape that is now ready to kind of be turned into um, a piece of jewelry so here we go so the next step once you've cut out your shape is going to be to look at um, how you Um, how you make your hole so basically to turn it into a piece of jewelry now what we want to do is we want to take one of these uh, one of these little earring findings and and a jump ring like this and what we're looking to do is we're basically looking to make a hole that's uh, big enough that the jump ring can go through 
So to do that, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take our all and what I'm going to say is you want to be making a hole that's not too close to the edge that, um, that you basically as you make your hole you end up breaking through the edge and, um, and then end up actually breaking, not, not being able to, to use it. Um, but at the same time, not too far in. See, if I was to make it here, this feels like a lovely safe place to make a hole because obviously I'm too far away from the edge to be able to, um, to break through. But at the same time, it's too far as well for my jump ring to actually be able to uh, get into. So um, I will, I'm going to say about about two to three mil uh, from the from, from the edge. Our, our jump rings are seven mil, so um, two to three mil should give you enough uh, space for uh, to make your your hole and to um, to be able to put your jump ring through. So if you have a look at what I'm doing here, I've got my fingers either side, uh, but uh, nice and clear away from where I'm going to be making the hole itself. It's good to have two fingers like this because you're basically providing the resistance that's needed to actually be able to put your all through. Okay, and I'm slowly working my way, just wiggling the all. And if you can see here, the point here has started coming out. So once I've got to that stage, what I want to do is I want to actually pull out and I want to go back in, but from the other side. And I'm gonna do this once, and each time I'm just going a little bit further in, okay? So I'm gonna do this. Um, and just keep on, once every so often, just switching sides because what you want to do is you want to make sure that your, your hole that you're making is um, equally sized from both, both, uh, both ends because obviously as this is a point, if it was only going in from one end you would have a hole that's bigger on one side and small on the other. So just slowly, slowly wiggling out. And the other advantage of doing it this way is that you're slowly and gently increasing um, the size of your hole. Uh, if, you, if you do that too quickly and in one go, you'll basically end up just snapping the plastic here. Uh, but if you do it gently and taking your time, uh, it, should, it should be fine and it should stay in one piece. Um, so that's my hole now. Kind of, I don't know if you can see it, there we go, you can see the hole there and it should now be a size uh, that's uh, suitable to put my jump ring through. Uh, so that's maybe something that you want to check as you're kind of slowly but surely kind of wiggling it in and um, just once every so often check uh, whether it's the right size for your jump ring. So uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to open up this jump ring and um, I'm going to show you once like this and then I'm going to show you uh, in a way that you can actually see kind of over my shoulder and see what I'm doing just so that you have um, a couple of angles to see um, how this jump ring is is being opened up because this is basically this is the tricky bit this is the bit that requires a little bit more skill so as you can see, um, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I've got my two sets of pliers and uh, one I'm going to use for holding it in place, okay? So um, there's a couple of ways you can hold it. You can hold it like this um, or you can hold it so that the two sides like this so that it's, it's basically and the opening for my jump ring is right here okay 
So um, that way I'm basically holding this side uh, forward, this side in place, and then I'm wiggling this side forward like this. Okay, it's kind of hard to see what I'm doing. But basically I'm not opening it up like this, I'm moving it forward like this. And the reason why I'm doing it that way is because by doing it like this, I'm basically opening up my jump ring, but I'm keeping the circular shape of it. If I open it up like this, it turns into more of a C shape, and then I you lose your circular shape and you'll never get it back. So, um, I'm now, I've now got my jump ring open, as you can see here, okay, it's kind of tricky to see because obviously it's a, it's a reflective metal, so on a camera it's, it never films very well. Uh, so apologies if you're finding it hard to make out. I've, uh, we've included a set of instructions in a PDF to go alongside with it and I'm going to make sure that it and, um, and it's got really nice um, photos that also show every, every step of this. Okay, so I'm basically testing out um, my jump ring here and it might be that I haven't made it quite big enough. The hole big enough. Um, yeah. So I'm just gonna need to go back with my awl and just make it just a little bit bigger. Okay. So again, kind of fingers either side um, to provide a resistance and then just gently wiggling it up. Okay. Don't go too heavy handed because you'll end up snapping a plastic and then having to start up from scratch. Let's see now. So, there we go. So we've got in now, and um, these flat nose uh, pliers are really good for helping you kind of just uh, moving it up and down inside the plastic okay so that's it inside the plastic now as you can see and what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to take um, I'm gonna take the earring uh, finding and I'm just gonna put that on so I've now got both my plastic and my earring finding on, um, on my jump ring and that means that I can now close my jump ring. So basically we're going to do now the same process but in reverse. So you're basically taking your jump ring, um, again you might need to kind of move it a little bit inside the plastic, make sure that you've got it nice and in the center. There we go. And then again, I'm using this set of pliers to kind of hold it in place. And then I'm moving, I'm basically moving the, the jump ring back into place. Um, so uh, originally what we did is we moved it forward so that to open it up and then we're basically moving it backwards to close it and you just kind of keep going backwards until you have a nice closed jump ring here uh, it's kind of hard to show you at this angle but um, hopefully I've done a second video that kind of shows you at the other angle yes, so you're holding it tightly with this pair of pliers here and then with this, with your right hand, with the flat nose pliers, you're basically opening up the jump ring like this. Okay, so once you've got it opened up, you can then feed through your piece of jewellery. So 
So there you go. Feed through your piece of uh, jewelry, and then you want to put on your little earring finder. You want to make sure that this is fed through all the way, and then. As I explained previously, what we're doing is we're moving it forwards and backwards, not in and out like this. So we're just going to move it back this way and close it again. Okay? So that's everything now nicely closed. And you've got your piece of jewellery all made. And that's basically your piece of um, jewellery made. So um, all you have to do is uh, repeat this process and then you'll have a set and, um, and then we've put um, two sets of findings so you can make yourself a couple of pair of uh, earrings and um, well, please do take photos, please send us uh, images of what you've made. Uh, we really want to see uh, your creativity, what you like making, etc. Um, I would uh, show these off, but unfortunately I don't have the right sort of holes, but as you can see, um, this is a nice kind of size for a kind of dangly earring. Um, and um, the last thing that I'm going to say is, as you've been cutting out the plastic etc you might have noticed that i've been kind of slowly kind of clearing my table and putting the plastic aside we provided you with a little uh, plastic bag uh, where all your uh, findings um, are going into uh, what i i'll ask is um, if you've got any leftover plastic uh, any bits that have broken off during the making process etc um, just uh, Pop them all into your little uh, bag and uh, rather than them ending up in the bin what we'll ask is um, that you just uh, put them all together in your little ziplock bag and uh, drop them off at the, at the deep end and uh, we'll take collection of those and uh, we'll recycle them again so that's the beauty of uh, plastic wherever you don't use uh, we'll take back and we'll recycle again. So um, the address for the deep end, etc., will be in your PDF. Uh, you'll be able to find it there. So um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the session. I really look forward to seeing what you're making. And um, yeah, please do, please don't uh, put any leftovers in the bin. Please do bring them back to us, and please do share any and all photos of. Uh, you during the making process, uh, you wearing your jewellery, um, anything that you make, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you very much. Bye.